Hi, this is Jeremy Windemuller, trial manager at Walters Gardens, and today we're going to talk about dianthus. We have two different types of dianthus that we're featuring here today. We have your standard dianthus here, and we also have a new couple new varieties. These are called Paint the Town, which tend to take a little bit more heat tolerance and uh, are faster growing, more ground cover types. Now, as far as growing tips go for these dianthus, we sell them in two different size plugs. We, have, we offer a 30 count plug in the spring here at Walters Gardens, which is vernalized. And that finishes a gallon pot in around eight to 10 weeks. And we also offer a 72 count plug that we recommend planting in late summer for bulking throughout the fall and then selling in the spring. And that finishes a gallon pot in around 10 to 12 weeks. Dianthus need to be grown at temperatures of around 62 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And plants that are planted in late summer need to be vernalized for around six to nine weeks at temperatures below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Once dianthus are fully vernalized, they can be forced into flower in around eight weeks time at temperatures of around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Vernalized dianthus planted in late summer are also beneficial because they end up being a fuller, more mature looking plant with gr a greater number of flowers. When transplanting dianthus, we recommend that you water them in thoroughly and then come by with a fungicide drench that will cover crown rots and root rot. And moisture levels during production should be kept moderately moist to slightly dry. You wanna make sure between irrigation cycles you allow that soil to dry slightly. Dianthus do benefit from being pinched, especially if you're starting with a small plug like a 72 count plug. Um, and you also want to remove any flowers that emerge before the plant is bulked up to, to the desired size. With Dianthus, we do recommend that you do soil testing on a timely basis because they do tend to be kind of salt sensitive. So high fertilizer rates that build up the EC levels can become detrimental to the plant. And so you want to make sure that you're testing, keeping the pH below 6.2 and also the EC levels kind of around the one and a half to two mark using the pour through method of testing. What happens if the pH in dianthus is elevated above 6.2 is you tend to start seeing yellowing of the crop. Uh, what's happening is it's not taking up the iron from the soil. So you want to make sure you drive that pH level down below 6.2, and the ideal range is between 5.8 and 6.0. Dianthus do benefit from a feeding of 50 to 100 parts per million nitrogen using a constant liquid feed program. Or you can use a medium rate of a slow release or controlled release fertilizer. You want to make sure if you do use controlled release fertilizer, you keep the fertilizer away from the crown as it may cause the crown to burn. And dianthus love a lot of light. They are very, it's very important to have them grown under clear poly or in direct light conditions like outdoors. There are very few um, insects that really tend to be a huge problem with dianthus. The most common insects we do see are aphids, thrips, and spider mites. And as far as diseases go, we, we see a crown and root rots that tend to appear when the plants have been overwatered for too long a period of time. So again, treating them with the fungicide drench and allowing the foliage to dry before evening. So that means morning watering and also keep allowing that soil to dry slightly between irrigation cycles will help reduce that. And again, this is Jeremy Wendemuller with Walters Gardens and I hope you can take these tips to help you be successful with growing dianthus. Mm -hmm.